From freesaloneducation.com, here with one of my favorite people as of last night, Charles Marcus. And we, you had sat down with dinner. Right. With us, right. You were just walking by and we're like, do you want to sit with us? And um, I heard some stories and just things. And you've been in this industry for how long? Oh, for about 30 years. But I tell you, some of the stories we can't share today, man. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll see how far we can dig okay, down. Okay, okay. But um, so thirty years. You there's so many things, and I think even if you're not a hairdresser and you're listening to this interview and you've just stumbled upon it somehow on YouTube, this is an interview that is going to be great for anyone. I think. I think it's just filled with stories. I and I just think you're a very motivational guy, an inspiration, and I'm very very honored to be sitting across from you and actually able to to ask you questions. So well, thank you so much and thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. I really, it's great, really looking forward to it. Well, it's fun because this is um, this is a different platform for hairdressers. I was uh, I worked in radio for a, a minute of my life yeah. and I've always loved it, but I never made any money doing it. So <laughs> I, I fell in love with hairdressing and I did that for the last 10 years and then I decided, you know what, let's put it together. Why not do this? Cool. Talk to cool hairdressers and people from the industry. And so um, let's get your story. Out. So 30 years you've been a hairdresser. Yeah, about 30 years hairdressing, sort of in the hairdressing world. I was behind the chair for probably 20 odd years. Okay. Uh, probably over 30 years altogether now, if I include as a speaker and educator. Yeah. I'm giving away my age here, yep. but that's okay, right? Yeah, that's so, fine. That's cool. That's cool. No, so we are. Uh, so tell me about. Um, we're at the Millennium Experience. Yeah, what a fantastic event. Absolutely amazing event. Yeah. I begged everyone for like three months to come to this event because it's one of the best hair events you will ever be at. I would agree. Right? I would agree. One of the certainly one of the premier events I've had the opportunity. This is my second occasion here and just love the whole atmosphere. Would encourage anybody to come. Three days of great stuff. Yeah. And so tell me, what is your class that you're doing here? And what, what is your favorite class to be teaching when you're out? Right. Well, that's a good question. So my class yesterday, it was, it was basically applicable for everybody. It was a how to take your business to the next level. So a lot of, uh, st you know, some was motivational. However, a lot of sort of insights of how to build your business, how to grow your business. Uh, certainly, service is very important, providing an exceptional service, communication skills. And we will be renting a whole, the, have the gammon. <laughs> And uh, today is more of for salon owners and managers for leadership is really how to create an environment out to encourage your, uh, say, your uh, uh, first producers, the top producers to stay, how to retain your people and how to attract, how to motivate, lead yeah. and retain a winning team. Awesome. Because leadership really matters today in the 21st century. It's paramount. Yeah. And and when Claybaugh was talking earlier, and there's different types of leadership. And, Absolutely. And I think people misconstrue what leadership really means. And so tell me what you think. What do you think a great leader is? What type of person? Firstly, I want to tell you, Matt, I don't think you need to have a fancy like a title to be a leader. I think I think anybody can be a leader. The Ritz Carlton Hotels empowers chambermaids up to two thousand dollars out without having to go to management to make a decision. Wow. That's the Ritz Carlton Hotels. A leader to me. Firstly, I think a leadership is a privilege. It's not a right. Right. A great leader to me is taking 
people from where they may want to go out to where they may need to go. It's about being able to make the tough decisions, uh, even when the decisions are not very popular, but always with a compassionate heart. Nice. And you, so you also talked about service. Service wanted, to me. I want you to tell the story about the hotel. Okay. That you told me at dinner. Right. So, uh, firstly, a lot of people think with service, it is just part of your business. To me, ladies and gentlemen listening, service is your business really today. So I checked in the Marriott here, a hotel in uh, Florida, beautiful hotel on the beach in Fort Lauderdale. I checked in on Saturday afternoon, and I had a bit of a cold flying, traveling and things. And I could, you know, feel flu was coming on. I phoned out the lady at the desk whose name um, is Drew. And I said, I'm shivering. If you could send up a blanket to me. Straight away, she sent up a blanket. That was good. Then there's a knock on the door, maybe 20 minutes afterwards. And I look through the people. I see this guy with a tray. And I'm thinking, oh, he's got the wrong number. And I yeah. open the door. I said, sir, it's not for me. He said, Mr. Marcus, it is for you. And he hands me the tray, and I see uh, beautiful fresh flowers, fruit, and a big bowl of hot chicken noodle soup, and a handwritten note from the lady I spoke to. Name was Drew. Mr. Marcus, sorry you weren't feeling well. Hope this makes you feel much better. Uh, phone me if there's anything else I can help you with. That is is world-class service, is creating yeah. an experience, it's going above and beyond. It's a simple thing, but it means so much. And I've shared that story on Facebook. I'm going to share it all over the world. In fact, my friends on Facebook say, we want to stay at that hotel <laughs> right. the next time we're in Fort Lauderdale. It's so cool. That's what we do for the people. People lose that, and I know that we're all guilty of it. I, you know... I maybe don't listen as much as I should. I mean, you can talk to my fiance about that. But right. That's that lady. What was her name? Drew. Drew. So Drew. Yeah. She listened to every detail. It wasn't just you needed a blanket. It was you were sick. You didn't feel good. Right. So she went above and beyond, and you will never forget that. You, you told that story. That's the second time I've heard it, Absolutely. and I still feel the same about it. I always say, Matt, there's two of well, his many things with communication skills. However, the first thing I say, and it's very hard for me sometimes as well, everybody wants to talk, is speak for 20% of the time, listen intently for 80% of the time, Hearing is a sense, listening is an art. Oh, I like that. Do you like that? I like that. <laughs> That's so, good. Okay, so tell me about, um, so 30 years ago. Yeah, about 30 years ago, maybe a little longer than 30 years, eh, yeah. We'll, we'll say it. Right. My so kids think I'm so uncool. However, now they're getting older. The dad's from England originally. Hey, dad, we want to go to England now. It's like, <laughs> cool, dad's from England. It was a hairdresser, you know. We never was cool right. before. Right, and you, uh, you live in Toronto. Yes, but I'm brought up a very proud English guy from Manchester, England, Northern English city. That's where I, I stayed, you know, for the first probably uh, 30 years of my life, 30, 40 years of my life, I was in England. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Still detects a little Manchester accent there. <laughs> right, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So tell me, um, tell me what it was like 30 years ago when you're, uh, you know, the, the industry, you're in it, where... What was it like? I, well, I tell you, it, it, it was very exciting. I have to just, I have to go a step actually back. And of course, I come from a, like a northern English city. And, you know, certainly in, in the mid-70s, early 80s, 
Uh, it was probably not the most sophisticated of cities. It is today. It's an incredible city. And when I was at school in Manchester, England, I used to have a very bad speech impediment, a very bad uh, stutter for many, many years, probably 25 years of my life. And so, you know, I was very uh, shy and introverted, you know, always bullied a lot at school and things. And I never really excelled. I think I was a pretty good student. But I never had the courage to put my hand up to answer the questions. However, I was very creative, very artistic. And my counselor, Sue McGregor at school, who detected my, um, you know, the talent I had, and long story short, she was able to get me an interview at Videl Sassoon's in England at that time. Which was the time. <laughs> Which was the time. And, you know, at that time, I have to say for Sassoon's, they were receptive for out for people who had maybe a special need, you know, a disability, which was amazing. And they hired me. Can you believe they, they gave me an opportunity? They saw my talent, saw my attitude, saw my smile. They overlooked my stuttering of all the stuttering was there. And, you know, I tell you, Matt, the only thing in life anybody's able to give you is an opportunity. And when you get an opportunity, you have to run. You remember at last year's Super Bowl, Bruno Mars? I'd never heard of Bruno Mars yeah. before. He got his opportunity and he ran with it. You've got to be ready. And yeah. I was ready when I went to Sassoon's. Okay. So and you so tell me about there was this great story that you just told me about Sassoon and and then we'll kind of go on right. from that but Sure, have the story meeting Videl, you yeah, mean? Well, you yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that's a great story for everyone. To so hear. I was, I was at Videl Sassoon's probably about uh, six, eight months. You know, I was an assistant, used to wash the hair, sweep the floor, <laughs> used to make the coffee. I was learning the craft, the arts and the craft. And then we heard, I was probably 18 at the time, and then we heard Videl Sassoon himself was coming over to visit the salon. How was cleaning that day? Uh, that was, <laughs> we, I would say if we backtrack a few weeks, it was pretty good. Yeah. And the day arrived, the big day arrived, Vidal Sassoon was in the salon, his wife at that time, Beverly Sassoon, and, you know, he came up to the third floor I was on. And, you know, I didn't speak a lot. However, people who stutter become great observers. I think, if you, you know, you just take a step yeah. back and you observe everything. You take it all in. And I remember there were all the um, senior managers there and the artistic team and all the big shots were waiting at the top of the stairs when he came up. He hardly even acknowledged them. He came came right to the back of the room, out to the basin where we washed our hair and we all had brown smocks. There was probably 14 assistants. Success does not impress me, Matt. Significance impresses me. Here's a guy, world famous celebrity, the most famous hairdresser in the world. He never forgot where he came from. Came over to the back of the room with that big smile. That's a secret, huge weapon to have. Yeah. You have a smile. You know, he engaged us all. He welcomed us. Thanks for being on the team. Yadi, yadi, ya. Then he started to speak to all of us. Very exciting, you know, for most people. For me, as a person who stutters, the hardest thing for a person to say is their name or their yeah. age, especially if it's the most famous hairdresser in the world. Right, that and when help. Yeah. it doesn't help. And when he came to ask me, you know, my name and my age, I started stuttering, like the, 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 how I used to speak. Right. Nobody had heard me stutter, had heard me hesitate. It freaked everybody else out in the salon that day except one person. Who do you think that was? 
the Dow. Yeah. He never took his eyes off me. The greatest gift you can give anybody is the gift of your attention. He knelt down. He squeezed my left hand so nobody else could hear. And he said very quietly, it's okay, young man. I've got all the time in the world. That's awesome certainly changed my life and you know when i share that story you can take it you know so many ways to me it's always tried to be since then and sometimes i've failed you know never prejudge anybody always to treat everybody the same and have all the time in the world and i tell you that thursday afternoon in that salon I'm sure impacted all the people and certainly changed a lot of life. Certainly my life. Yeah. Because if you think if he would have walked by me, who knows what would have happened? I could have got fired, your embarrassment, and, you know, a shy 18 year old, low self esteem at that time. Who knows where my life might have gone, Matt? Yeah. And that's the thing you talk about opportunity. I mean, it's not like he's handing you, but he gave you that opportunity to kind of flourish from that. Oh, Vidal Sassoon's, I mean... It doesn't always have to be a physical... Right. Thing. I mean, I mean, Vidal Sassoon's was very, very hard. You know, at the time I thought it was really grueling. However, the discipline and the living up, you know, being high expectations and the best... Uh, it always you can be and um, focusing on the guest or the client and you know service and all this has stayed with me uh, for years and years and I'm still excited I mean I'm still right. very <laughs> excited you know when I talk about it I feel it's a privilege where I started and that's the thing I love about you because I I, I don't I didn't really know you until this weekend but I knew of you right and um, just every time I've seen you in the hallway or any you're always smiling you're always happy and you always are willing to I mean, you sat with us at dinner last night and just had conversations and, and I learned so much and I think more people need to, that's what I like to do. I like to listen to people that have been doing this because, you know, I plan on being in this industry for the rest of my life right. and I, I want to learn from people that have already done it. Sure. You know? And I think that I mentioned out to you and Fad at dinner that everybody's got a story as long as you take the time to listen. I was yes, telling you that some of the, you know, the best stories I get is when I'm in Manhattan with the, you know, in the cab at the, it's at LaGuardia and I, you know, I asked the driver taking me into Manhattan, sir. Uh, share with me your story and everybody's got a story if you yeah. just take the time to listen to people yeah and you can learn so much from it so, absolutely a Abs button that says attitude yeah your, attitude at it. At What's attitude that about? so um uh, so when i was in sales i um uh, uh, for many years i worked uh, uh for nexus who yeah it should be a huge company, and I won a big sales award. And the guy who was the manager at the time, he gave me this attitude. I had the best attitude in the company. That's great. So wherever I go, and it's amazing, people stop me at airports, in hotels, in restaurants. And, you know, it reminds me of always to have a great attitude. I believe your ability will get you started, Matt. Yeah motivation will drive you but ultimately your attitude will determine how far you go in life i remember somebody asked me at you know a seminar about a year ago to put up the hand and he said mr marcus having a great attitude sir will not necessarily will guarantee you success i said absolutely but i tell you one thing sir having a lousy attitude will guarantee <laughs> you failure yeah, exactly. 100% you on go. the money so charles where do people find you if if they want to bring you in, I know you do a lot of work at the Paul Mitchell schools. And yeah, you do it all over the world. Right, all over the world. Work for some, you know, fabulous. You know, like they have the best of the best in the beauty industry. Worked, you know, for Weller, for Goldwell, at all the shows and things. If they go to my website, 
if you go to uh, C Marcus, that's my first initial, C M A R C U S dot C O M, or you can follow me if you go to Twitter, it's Charles, one word with a capital M out for my middle initial is Michael and C A N A D A. However, if you go to my website, it's got the links. So, cmarcus.com. Okay, I will post down below in the description of this video, I'll post the link so people can just click it. Fabulous. And the website also, it's not only if you want to bring me in, it's got a lot of great free stuff. I do do have a monthly, like a newsletter, a free success newsletter. I have about probably 153 articles on service and things and, you know, sales, success, everything. It's not only for the beauty industry. It's a very, it's a general... Uh, sites and things, but there's a lot of free stuff as well. Well, Charles Marcus, I love the stories. I love it. you. Were, I love that I got to sit down with you. I wish you know we could just go on forever and ever. Is there anything else you want to put out there? <laughs> I just want to finally, I want to say, I want to thank you for the opportunity. And I want to say to all the hairdressers out there, a great hairdresser is difficult to find, hard to forget, and impossible to leave. Do the business every day, guys, and be the full package. That's awesome. Charles, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Matt, for the opportunity. Yeah, and I I look forward to... You know, learning more from you in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, guys, make sure that you subscribe below. Check out Charles Marcus on his website. Well, it's posted below, and we'll post the link in the video. Yep. Final thing I also, I forgot to tell you that I do have a book, a bestseller, Success is Not a a Spectator Sport. And by the way, I have a bestseller (laughs) book. Okay, so how do we get that? Uh, so if you go on the website and okay. you're able to order it on the website, is success is not a spectator sport, how to take action and achieve more. There you go. Thank you, All Matt. Right, Charles. It's been great, All sir. Right, we'll see, ya. <laughs> Thank see you, you guys on the next video. Thanks. Hey, guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com here outside with Martino Cartier, right? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> so Martino Cartier in Florida at the Millennium Experience where he decided to do it outside. It was his idea. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful out here. Yeah, you can't go wrong. We're leaving today to go back home, so um, I'm glad that we got to chat. And I, the thing I like most about you is that last night I said, you know what, we didn't get to the podcast. Let's do it when we get home. And you said, no way, let's do it <laughs> at 8 a.m. tomorrow outside. Yeah. So, so thank you so much for doing this. Thanks and for having me. So uh, let's talk about the experience real quick. We'll go over that, and then I want to get to know you a little bit, and then you know we'll go from there. But um, at the experience, what what were you doing there? Well, I mean, we had a couple classes. Like day one, it was more hair and color techniques, styling techniques, cutting techniques. Um, but day two yesterday was the motivation, and for me, that was the ticket. That's what you love doing. It's what I love doing, and with having win yesterday, it was like <clears throat> it was like the perfect setup. You know, like yeah. he got everybody, you know, emotional and feeling good. And then we got to uh, take it from there. And it was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool because it felt like the whole entire day yesterday was just a huge motivational day. And I don't know if they set it up that way to be that way, but it was just like one after the other. I think people were it, crying. It was. And, it, they were. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, it's so important for hairdressers because, you know, they say motivation, you know, only lasts a day. Right. So, well, so does a bath. So you take one every day. You got to get motivated every day because if you're not, then behind the chair, it reflects in your work. It reflects in your attitude. It reflects in your salon, your staff. So I think this experience was exactly that, an experience. Yeah. And I think that everybody, there's still one more day of classes for them, but we're leaving. And um, I think everybody, you just leave these events and you feel so inspired and you just want to go back and and be a better stylist, a better salon owner and all of that. No, I agree 100%. You know, that's that's how you grow. You know, that's how you keep going to the next level. And I've really enjoyed... Enjoyed. Uh, this is my second year working with you here, right? Because we did Doral. You were not at the first uh, no three no, years ago. Just it, was it Phoenix? Okay, so we um, but so I really got to meet you last year. Um, and the thing I liked about you is you are you are at the show in the morning. You have breakfast with everyone. You don't come down late. You stay all day. You work with every hairdresser. You say hi to everyone. You hug everyone. <laughs> and then at night, you are there until the end of the night. And you never go away, and I think that that's a really cool thing. And well, thanks. You know, it, it's something to look up to because I think sometimes hairdressers feel a little rock star-ish, and, and that's okay to feel. But 
but they're never around people. Yeah. So, no, I listen, it's my therapy. I always tell people that I love people and I love being around people and I like making people feel good. And, um, you know, you got to be in it to win it. And it's game on, you know, that's yeah. the theme this weekend. So game on means you're in the whole game. Right. From beginning to end, you know? Yeah. You don't leave at halftime and never come no, back. Right. No. So <coughs> you, um, let's talk about you because you have so much going on. And I was telling you last night, I'm like, I think you just took on another thing. <laughs> and you're, so you're, you're the first person I've met that is most time a stylist will connect with a distributor and or they'll connect with the product line and they'll work with multiple distributors. You are working with multiple product <laughs> lines. It's like nothing I've ever seen. You so, know, it's it's it was hard in the beginning because, you know, I've been with Carrington Complex for uh, almost seven years. So, you know, when I went to them and said, look, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I said, you know, it's not a conflict. Like I would right. never obviously represent another straightening company uh, or smoothing company or even color company, you know, right. now that we have color. Now they have color, yeah. But, um, but like, you know, I have Martino, Cartier by Amica on HSN, you know, and it's a consumer volumizing line. So right. it really doesn't conflict with keratin. Um, hot heads, hair extensions, you know, they are a big part of Friends Are By Your Side. Um, so I do a lot of stuff with them and their new line hair talk. Um, and then I've done stuff with freestyle systems because right. we have them in our salon and I love them and Blair's a great guy. Um, and now with... Um, the furniture as last night as you said <laughs> yeah so so many things so let's talk about uh, i think it, it's important for people to know i mean you're the only hairdresser i know driving a lamborghini <laughs> and i don't want to talk about that as the point of right. this whole thing but what i want to talk about is is your journey in that because everybody saw you on tabitha once and then they saw you on Tabitha twice. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you exploded into this thing you started working with keratin and you and uh it, it's just this whole evolution, I mean, I've just, you, everybody's watched it. So explain what happened because it was one day you're on Tabitha and you, and your salon is crazy. And the next day we see you, it, that's what it feels like driving a Lamborghini. So how did that transition? What happened in your life and how did it go? Well, my first salon was in 1998 and okay. um, we had like three chairs. I had no, I told this story yesterday. I had no money and I wanted to open up my own salon and <clears throat> there was a sign out front of this building and it said Robson Goldberg. So I called the number and the guy answers the phone, Robson Goldberg, you know? And I said, uh, I'm interested in your, your space on Egg Harbor Road, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, what do you want to open? And I said, a hair salon. He's like, there's one across the street. Why would you want to do that? And I said, well, <laughs> I don't mind competition. Right come to my office. So I went to his office and I walk in and he says, uh, what nationality are you? And I said, oh, I was so scared. I was in my twenties, you know, right, early twenties. Yeah. And I said, I'm uh, Egyptian. He went, Oh my God, you're a terrorist. You know, it's just great. They just funny though. <laughs> okay, he was, he okay. was, I was like, yeah. this is a horrible story. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> Leon Goldberg, um, actually like gave me my, my break. So he gave me six months free rent. Wow. Um, cause he says to me, do you have any money? I said, I have $1,400. That's all I had to my name. And uh, he's like, do you have any credit? I'm like, no, not really. And why he still gave me this space yeah. with six months free rent. And he said, you know, uh, the quicker you get open, the quicker you can bring money in before you have to pay rent. So yeah. use your time wisely. So I went to this store that had never been a store. It was a cement slab sheet rock that wasn't painted yet, you know? Yeah. And, um, in four days I opened a salon. No, wow. it wasn't the nicest salon. I'll I'll give you that. Yeah, but, but it doesn't matter because it, was, it, it takes months and right. months and, and it, even a year yes. for people. Okay, so it was four days of painting the slab, yeah. getting cheap mirrors, gluing them on the wall, right. buying a ten dollar uh, plaster pillars at a craft store, yeah. right, and putting a piece of glass on the top. That was my makeshift station. So in four days, I called Leon and I said, uh, "I'm ready. I'm ready to open." And he went, "What do you mean? It's been four days." Yeah. And uh, I said, "I'm done." He said, "I'll be right there. Goodbye." And uh, <laughs> he, he came over and he walked, saw that I painted the floor and he was like, "Oh my God, you ruined it!" You know. But that turned into a beautiful friendship. Okay. Leon Goldberg. It was. The, I tell you, he's my really the guy that gave me my break, you know. So seven years later, that salon that I started with fourteen hundred bucks, I sold for about one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Okay, and, and bought my second salon. Okay, which was it used to be called Millennium, and it was a nine hundred and some thousand dollar salon that went under. And when okay. it went under, I got it for $186,000. Oh, wow. And then three years later, a doctor wanted it to turn into a medical spa. So he paid four seventy-five dollars to the salon. <laughs> I paid one eighty-six, dollars And 
honored $85,000 worth of outstanding gift certificates. Wow. So when he did that, that's when I bought the Giovanni and Pileggi, which became Martino Cartier Salon. And um, we were very busy when Tabitha came. But Tabitha gave us exposure. Right. And that was yeah. the key. You know, yeah. so when um, my first time ever being on stage at a hair show was for Freestyle System because I okay. wanted the blow dryers and Bravo didn't have them in the budget. So I called Blair, who I didn't know. Okay. I'm like a little girl, I begged on the other end of the phone. I'm like, I really want your blow dryers. I, I'll do anything. I promise. I promise. You know, I literally begged. You could yeah. ask him. And uh, he said yes. So I got awesome. 33 freestyle systems. And I just was over the moon, you know? Yep. It just set us apart. It took us from ordinary to extraordinary, you know? Yeah. And um, so he said, I want you to come do a hair show for me. I didn't even really know what a hair show was other than going to IBS New York once in a while, you know? Right. So um, we get on stage. And I'm scared to death. Yeah. I had no idea what to do. I had never done it before. And I'm talking about the blow dryer, and I, and I, and I just looked like an idiot. That's what I thought. Right. Blair said I did great, but me, I didn't think I did great, you know? Right. Um, so Blair brought me to Chicago, Orlando, and, and when we were at Chicago, I'm walking through the convention center, and Lindsay Solomon, president of marketing for Keratin Complex, saw me walking okay. by her stage. And she said, oh my God, that's that guy on Tabitha. Bring him on stage. And yeah. I went on stage again, not really being a platform artist, you know. Um, and when I got on stage, it just took off. And once I saw the energy and yeah. the people feeding it, that's how I became a platform artist. Yeah. And, and you, <coughs> on a platform, you are... I think that was one of the things that I told you last year because I was hesitant to even say hello to you because you are intense on stage and I'm not an intense person. So I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know what this guy's going to be like. So, but when you're on stage, you are actually when you're anywhere, I, you have more energy than anyone, you know, ever so, telling you it's my therapy. Okay. It's my therapy. I, I told Win we did a master series yesterday and I yeah. said to him, if I'm not doing then that's when the demons in my mind start coming out. Yeah. You know, like all the things like, I, I said at the class yesterday, I said, you know, how many of you, when you call someone and they don't answer the phone, your mind right away starts, maybe they're mad, maybe yeah. this, maybe that, you know, those stupid little things. Well, imagine that times a thousand. That's right. my crazy brain, you know? So when I'm constantly doing or working or running or, then I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So you went, um, so you're working with Keratin Complex. So you're, are you traveling doing shows with them yeah. quite a bit? Yeah, I do every trade show, you know, okay. for them. And we do a ton of VIP events for distributors. Okay. We travel all over. So I, I give them 60 days a year. Wow. 60 days a year. That's a lot of That's days. That's my contract. Yeah. Wow. Okay. 60 days a year for them. And HSN, I'm probably at least 25 days. Right. You know? And then uh, how many times? So HSN is in Florida, right? HSN is in Florida. Um, it's the most magical place on the planet. Really? That it, yeah, it's unbelievable. It's a machine. Um, the CEO, Mindy Grossman, she um, she is the CEO of Frontgate, Chasing Fireflies, HSN. She's in Forbes magazine all the time. Most powerful woman in America, and she is like um, she's like win. In right. a woman, you know, yeah. she is, she just believes in people. She invests in people and, um, she just, she's unbelievable. She's Habitat for Humanity. She's more than me.org, which helps little girls uh, in Nigeria, gets them off the street. You know, uh, she does, um, uh, UNICEF. She sits on the board of UNICEF. Like she just is like a modern day mother Teresa. And what brought you into that? So I always oh. wanted to be on the home shopping network. Okay. So when I, when I opened <laughs> that, of course, <laughs> When I opened that first salon, and um, we had a TV, you know, an old, big, fat TV in the salon, and people would flip through, and this one woman, um, she was watching QVC, and Nick Chavez was on, and um, she just said, oh, one day you could be like Nick Ch Chavez, I didn't even know who he was, you know, and uh, I, I didn't even know what QVC was, you know, I was like 22, and I said, where's, uh, where's QVC, and she's like, you know, it's up the street, yeah. you know, it's near King of Prussia yeah, right Mall, next to us. and uh, she said, but HSN's in Florida. Home Shopping Network. I'm like, I don't want to go to QVC. <laughs> Screw that. I'm going yeah. to HSN. And uh, but it took like five years to okay. get into HSN. And um, it just once I five got in. Five years of what? Five years of trying to get the brand right. Okay. Trying to get the right connections at HSN. Yeah. You know. And once I got into HSN and I met um, the the chief market chief mar merchandising officer um, Ann Martin Vishon, I started doing her hair. 
Okay. So then she introduced me to Mindy Grossman, who happens to be adopted. So when I, okay. she was like, Martino's adopted. And then we just built this amazing friendship. I do her hair. I go to her house. I bring my son. She lives up in, she has a beautiful home in Millbrook, New York, 70 acre property. Oh, wow. It's okay. Been Oprah, in Oprah Magazine, you know, and her husband, Neil, is phenomenal. He's always, he does podcasts himself and uh, he's always on Bloomberg and uh, he's just amazing. So they've just taken me and my son in like family, yeah. you know, and um, it's just, it's, I feel like every time I turn around, there's somebody else influential in my life that just cares. And, you know, it's funny. Yesterday when Wynn said, you know, who is your influence right now? I'm like, Mindy Grossman's my influence. You know, John McCormick from Visible Changes is my influence, you know. Okay. Mario Argenti is an influence, you know. These are all people in the industry that, you know, to me that are just important. Yeah. You know? And I think, so tell me, um, so we're both dads. Your son is... How old is your son now? He looks- My, he'll be 15 in September. Okay. But he looks like he's having a great time with you. He's so fun. I yeah. love him. He's, it's going to be better now. He's done school. Actually, he's done school today. Today's I know. His last. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I'm going to start taking him with me, you know, to shows. And he wants to do this. He wants to be a hairdresser. He does? Yeah. So I said to him, I said, Brigade, enough with the four-wheelers, dirt bikes, and wave runners. You need to start coming to the salon because if he does it now... By next year, I could have him on stage at trade shows. Yeah, I mean, you know? imagine if you would have started at 15. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. I, and hairdressers always say, you know, I started when I was four. But, like, yeah. really starting. Really In a started. salon, helping out, working. Yeah. And, no, totally. Yeah. Because he, I said to him, I said, Brigade, if you're on stage with me and we're both razor cutting one head at the same time, he's going to be like Plus, you guys kind Mac of look Daddy. Yeah. identical. So, <laughs> it would be pretty funny. Yeah, it's my buddy. So, tell me... Um, Oh, what else do I want to talk? Oh, so obviously we want to get into your friends are by your side. Yeah, I want to talk about that and, and get in depth with it because I know it means a lot to you. You've done a lot of amazing things Thanks. for people. So Thanks. I want to let's talk about that and we'll talk about your event coming up and all of that stuff. So we started Friends Are By Your Side three years ago. It yeah. was a vision I had. I thought, you know, I always loved We Are the World. Michael Jackson right. and friends, you know, yeah. and if you watch the video or the making of it, it's really powerful. And I'm watching it one day and um, I thought, could you imagine if just like Michael Jackson brought all these musicians together, what if we brought hairdressers together and really made a difference? Not you raise all this money, it goes to some whatever and you don't see the fruit of it. Like, right. you know, like really something tangible. And um, everyone said it wouldn't work. I mean, I'm talking... I won't throw people under the bus, but I'm talking big, right? big people in the industry. Just said it wouldn't work. And um, I, at one point, I almost gave up. Yeah. I almost quit and just I, I put so much money into starting the foundation. And um, then I just said, you know what? I'm going to change the name. I'm going to change it up. And that's how it became Friends Are By Your Side. Okay. So What, what was fr- the name originally? <clears throat> Marion and Friends. Okay. And, uh, but it was meant to be. If that didn't happen, you know, it's always, like, again, right. I say it's the drawback of the bow that drives the arrow. If it wasn't for that, then Kiki wouldn't have got her wish before she passed away. Okay. Emma wouldn't have just got into St. Jude's when she was sent home on hospice. Right. You know, so what we do is we step in when other charities or foundations have red tape that, that stops them from being able to make a difference in that situation. That's when we step in. Okay. So we don't have any red tape. For example, uh, you know, our mission statement is to provide wigs and wishes to women and children going through cancer, regardless of their financial situation. Right. There was a little girl. You probably saw it online. She wanted to. Um, her dad was dying. They lived in California. It had like 99 million views on CNN. Okay. And the dad's dying, and she says to her mom, "Daddy's never going to get to walk me down the aisle." So imagine an eleven-year-old saying that to her mother. Yeah. So they put on this wedding, fake wedding, right? Right. Dress her up like a bride. They have bridal party. They the whole. I mean, I'm telling legit wedding. Yeah. The father walks the daughter down the aisle, and the pastor pronounced them father and daughter. I okay. mean, it was the yeah. video is like dance with my father again. I don't know how music. I missed this video, but I'll you, have you to have watch to, it. I mean, my Definitely. hair stand. And, and we'll put a link to that video yeah, down below beyond. so people can watch yeah, it if they haven't seen it. It is. Do it when you can cry because I, I was on a plane going to HSN. <laughs> okay. Someone sent me the link. I'm on GoGo in flight Wi-Fi. Right. I'm in the bulkhead, the very front of the plane, watching this video. The flight attendants are staying there and the tears are just <laughs> pouring down my face. Right. You know? So I sent the video to AJ, our exec- executive director, and um, within 24 hours he got a hold of the family. And I said, see if the little girl wants something. See if there's a wish. Okay. The little girl doesn't have cancer. Right. So if we had red tape... We couldn't do that. 
But this little kid deserved it, you know? Yeah. So we called, and she wanted a honeymoon. So we flew out to L.A., because okay. they live in California, and we took the whole bridal party, the daughter, the mom, the dad, the sisters, everybody, to Disneyland for three days. That's awesome. It was freaking amazing that's cool yeah so you know it, you change lives you yeah. know and like the, I, said, I mentioned the girl Emma you know she was a little girl that we granted a wish for last year uh, she was at Birmingham Children's Hospital Alabama and she wanted to meet a princess but was too sick to go to Disney so we flew Cinderella Peter Pan Jasmine you know <laughs> down there and I went down and made this little girl's life a year later I get a phone call that Emma took a turn for the worst now five years old sent okay. home on hospice so I wanted to call the mom but I just di I didn't know what you know what do you say right so I waited a couple of days and when I called the mom I said Amy I'm so sorry like I'm so sorry what happened long story short she needed this phase one treatment just to give her a fighting chance and they only had eight slots okay and all of them are full so they sent her home on hospice so I said to the mom you're telling me that there is something that might help this kid your daughter yeah but they sent her home on hospice and she yeah. said yeah so I said, let me call you back. So I called Mindy Grossman from HSN, who's friends with Marlo Thomas of St. Jude. Okay. And I said, Mindy, you got to help this little girl. Mindy immediately called Marlo. Marlo immediately responded. And guess where Emma is? In St. Jude. So it's like, you know. This is crazy. It's nuts. It's and insane. And awesome and, and just crazy that that's, that's what the things that a lot of people I don't think understand. That's what goes on you know, behind the scenes and people could be helped and they're not being helped. And that's why I think it's all the time, you know, and the women wear these, but the sun is like, <laughs> it's okay. No, <laughs> it, it happens all the time. And you know, there's like other foundations that I, I won't mention that, you know, collect hair, you know, supposedly to give out free wigs and this little girl, uh, Molly, who I just posted on my Facebook, she's three years old, Yeah, three years old. She is this big, like right. little yeah. teeny, 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 beautiful girl. And, um, they contacted this foundation was she the, it was about this long with the bangs yeah, that you put yeah, on it yeah, yeah, yeah super cute adorable right yeah, yeah. Okay, so her mother contacted this foundation that most of us have donated hair to in our career and they wanted they if you go on their website you have to show your tax return to qualify for a wig I, I think that is the most ludicrous and that this industry has allowed that to even happen yeah. is a joke yeah that's like, crazy if my kid god forbid if your kid, God forbid, yeah. you're going to spend whatever penny you have yeah. on experimental treatments. You're going to just, you're not going to work. Yeah. You, 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 you don't want to spend all that even, money on a, on hair. They wanted $3,500. That's, yeah. To that's put a crazy. wig on that little girl. So, you know, there was a need for friends are by your side. And now, you know, three years later, we're in eight countries, eight countries. And every time I say that, it's like awesome. eight countries, you and know? Friends are by your side can't happen without who besides you hairdressers hairdressers it can't happen without hairdressers so and what are the hairdressers doing so hairdressers make a vow to never charge a woman going through chemotherapy for a wig so what they do is they go on friendsarebyyourside.com and they click the pledge now they fill out their salon information within 24 hours it puts them on a worldwide map that is recognized by the American Cancer Society okay so the American Cancer Society passes our information when women call and say I'm losing my breast I'm losing my hair I don't know what to do don't worry. We've got friends are by your side. Okay. And all the hospitals do it too. So, you know, we need we need thousands of salons, not yeah. hundreds. Right. You know, because there are so many areas in the, in the United States, if you go on the map, that are really weak uh, with friends are by your side salons. So what yeah. happens is they contact us and then we get the wigs and we will ship it to them. But it's, it's they need the experience. You know, yeah. when a mom comes in the salon and she has kids... Um, usually the mom's really upset, obviously, um, can barely talk. So there's two things you can do. You can get them a tissue, put your hand on them, and have the worst experience of their life. Or you can crank the music up, tell them, let's have a party. Yeah. We're going to give you a mohawk. Your kids are going <laughs> to spray it every color under the sun. You're going to turn that negative into a positive, And your wig's going to look better than your own hair ever did, would, or could. Okay. And that's what we do. Awesome. It's really fun. And it's so, that's what I, okay. So if you're a hairdresser and you're out there and you want to you do something. And I, I know a lot of salons want to do something, but they never know what to yeah, do. Yeah, or, or how. Yeah. <laughs> so go to friendsarebyyourside.com. 
pledge. That's right. And and get connected to it. And from that, so was, they'll just get a phone call. So yeah. So what happens is usually once you sign up, there, you it tells you exactly what to do on the website. There's videos of us telling you, but you can always call us. You can call me. Okay. You can email through the website. It goes right to my phone. You know, and um, we'll send you a catalog to show you where to get wigs, and we tell you how to raise the money. See, that's the big thing. Okay. A lot of salons say I can't afford. I can barely pay my bills. How am I going to pay for these free wigs? Yeah. So what I tell people is. We ask every single client that leaves our salon, would you like to donate a dollar or more to Friends Are By Your Side, which provides free wigs for women going through chemo? Right. You have to say the whole thing. If you have a pigeon receptionist, she's going to go, you want to donate a dollar to Friends Are By Your Side? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then, it's you like know, the lady at CVS. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, you have to. And then once you, the cool part about it is once you um, do one and you take pictures, then you put that in a little frame on your desk. And yeah. everyone is affected by cancer. So people will want to help you. Yeah. And it's 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 a pay it forward thing. So you just did a free wig, right? You took your time, you took your talent, you took your treasure, you changed a life. Yeah. When that person leaves, she's going to tell so many people because there's no one doing what we do. Right. So she's gonna tell so many people what your salon did. People are gonna to wanna to go to your salon yeah. because of what you do. Right. And it, it all comes back to that whole story of it's when when the world says it's not what you know but who you know, I think that's a bunch of crap. Yeah. It's it's what you want as a salon owner or a hairdresser, you want people to know you that you don't know. Right. As many people as you can. Yeah. If your whole town knows who you are, but you don't know them, guess what? One day, they're gonna come to you. Because right. they know you, and you don't know them, and that's what you want. That's the energy and the culture you wanna build. Yeah, and that's perfect. And so, let me see if, uh, there's one other thing. So, we talk about, you're, are you doing stuff with Paul Mitchell the school at all? I have done some stuff for Paul Mitchell, um, for Paul Mitchell schools. Um, and showed them different keratin treatments. I've showed them our It's a Blonde thing, Ombre, and okay. stuff like that, and done motivation. And let's get into uh, the, just within your salon, when you get new people, um, let's talk a little business real quick. What do you think is your, um, are you hiring a lot? Is it, uh, tell me about your salon life. So, our, we, so we have two salons. Yeah. So we have one in Cherry Hill which is our newest salon that wasn't on Tabitha, and then we have the one in Washington Township. Okay. The one in Washington Township is about 3,900 square feet. It's big. About, yeah, it's a big salon, yeah. 35 employees there. Um, and you know, we have a really strong core of employees. Um, we lost two employees in, I don't know, seven years, Okay. and it was recent. That's, that's good. You know? Yeah. Um, and so do we hire a lot? I would say there's a more of a turnover through like um, receptionist or right. shampoo girls, assistants kind of thing. Core but team. the core, I'm talking about like stylists, you know? Which is actually um, really good for having that many staff and that little turnover. I gotta tell you, the and, staff is yeah. great. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do what I do right. if the staff was dysfunctional. Yeah, so let's talk about you're on the road 100 days a year at least. Yeah. So how do you keep successful two salons being on the road constantly? Again, I'm going to attribute it to the staff because yeah. the staff is really great. And, you know, like when, I, when I'm not there on a Saturday, you know, I come in the next week and, you know, you got Nancy and Chrissy and they're going, we missed you Saturday, Marty. You know, they always bust my chops, call me Marty. But um, it's, it's just it's, it's great that they have stepped up to the plate, the staff, yeah. and that they have, you know, they're responsible, yeah. you know. And um, – Look, I set high standards, and they know it. I mean, these people say I want to work for you. I'm like, you better ask my staff because I'm really tough. Yeah, you know, I am, and I and I admit it. Um, but they're great. Yeah, they really are. I, I, awesome. I can't take credit for it. I mean, they if they were a bunch of pigeons, I wouldn't be able to do it. You right. Know? But yep. they're eagles. You know. Awesome. Well, is there anything else that you want to touch on? Plug. I, I, I we just, have your party coming up. Uh, yes, oh, in that's October, right. October, right? Night of Wigs and Wishes, October fifth. Um, it was amazing. There's a link from yeah. last year. Yeah, maybe you we'll could put give that it link to, down yeah, there too. It, yeah. Highlights of Wigs and Wishes. It's just great. You know, the whole Jersey Licious cast was there last year, and Tabitha was there, and you know, all the behind the chair launch pad and modern and. Um, it was just amazing. People saw wishes granted live. You saw wigs done live. The dancing and the partying and the event was like black tie option, and it's just yeah. over the top. Over the top. Yeah, me and my fiance were there. You know, we got to see the whole thing. We sat at the Millennium table. Nice. And it was it was extravagant and and big. And you saw the people getting the wishes and all that. And you just saw the people that you had. 
touched and helped and just uh, from young to older and it was that's what i i just loved seeing that i mean it's one of those things where like you were saying before you donate you, you donate hair to places you do all these things but you never see what happens it's nothing with it. tangible yeah you know, so. and i i want the next group of hairdressers it's been three years to step up to the plate yeah that they can become a part of friends or by your side own it because on the website, on the homepage, it says, tell us your story. So you could go on as a salon owner, a hairdresser, upload pictures of lives you've touched, because I, this needs to be a legacy. Like yeah. I want, I, I'm looking for the next group of hairdressers that are passionate about helping people and want to make it their own, yeah. you know? Yep. So, so definitely go to Friends Are By Your Side, pledge. If, if you're looking to, to make a change and do, totally. do different things. Yeah. I loved the party last year because of my favorite part was, was when you brought the people out and showed that. So uh, and I'm looking forward to going again. We definitely will be doing that. Awesome. And uh, just make sure if you guys, if they want tickets for that, they yeah, you go. Can get, tickets are on sale at fr- on, uh, yeah. okay. um, friendsabyyourside.com. There's an Eventbrite link. You can get them right online. Okay. Um, and if you know anyone that wants to be a sponsor or you want to put stuff in the swag bags, there's also a, um, a tab for that that yeah. if you want to... You know, get involved that way. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I, free salon education will be. It will be in those nice in those things. That is my plan. So, um, all right, cool. So I'll put that. All those links will be below. Uh, Martino, people follow him on Facebook. You get to see a lot of everything that you're doing and your travels, and it's fun. And you're on Instagram as well, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so just follow and see and just you know be inspired by Martino. I'm Thanks, really brother. glad. I, this is my second year working with you, and um, when I. When I'm around you, I like it. I like Thanks. the energy that you have. You're, You're a nice guy. So, Thanks. Um, and right, you are guys. too, just for doing this. This free education is a brilliant idea, by the way. Well, it's a brilliant idea. It's easy to do things. You know, I showed him last night. I pulled out my phone. I go, look what's on the top of my YouTube feed <laughs> when you go onto my YouTube. Right? Yeah, it was all us. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. So, all right, Martino, thank you very much, guys. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and all of that. And we will see you guys on the next video. Thanks. Awesome. I just broke up with you and now i'm sure i'll be the bad guy too although as we both know that isn't true Better